Hello, and welcome to a Calibre how-to video guide. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to debug a Calibre perk point-to-point -point resistance violation by segmenting the effective parasitic resistance path of a layout net trace into smaller resistance segments. This will allow us to better pinpoint which portion of our layout net trace is contributing the most to the overall resistance. For example, if one particular segment of our net is contributing a larger portion of the effective resistance, we know to focus our debug attention in that segment first in our efforts to reduce the overall parasitic resistance. With the Caliber RVE Perk Interactive P2P GUI, these kinds of simulations can be set up interactively and very quickly. Let's take a look at an example. We begin by opening our layout in the Layout Viewer, as well as an existing PERC point-to-point results database. In this case, we have a standard DFMDB with the PERC P2P.RDB tab open. We can start by looking at a specific P2P result that we're interested in debugging. In this case, P2P underscore one has 179 ohms. We would like to further segment this and break it down into smaller segments. That way we could see if we could pinpoint where the higher effective resistance is coming from. In order to do this, we could start in RVE by highlighting the original fly lines and sources and sinks for the rule-based P2P result, as well as the layout net. Once we have a good understanding of what the actual rule-based result looks like, we can go ahead and launch the interactive P2P GUI. In this GUI, we have the Probe Setup tab, which is going to be our main working environment, as well as the Options tab and the Transcript tab. In the Options tab, we're going to go ahead and enable a setting that will automatically highlight the fly lines when placing your points, in addition to the actual points themselves. We can now navigate to the Probe Setup tab and add our first experiment. In this case, we're going to place a source at the same location as the original source from the rule-based result. That way we have a good coherent starting point. In this case, it's going to be on net ENL and metal layer one. If we hover the mouse over the location name, it'll give us the actual coordinate data for that particular source. For the first segment, we want it to go from the original source up to these three parallel branches in the net trace. In order for us to get one effective resistance value from this experiment, even though we're going to have three sinks, we want to select short all sinks. This will give us three sink points that are shorted, giving us one effective sink. We can now place our sinks. This completes the first segment of our simulation. For the next segments, we will create new experiments following similar steps, only this time for the source, we're going to reuse the sync of the previous experiment, giving us continuous segments of our result net. We repeat this for two more segments until we reach the original sinks of our rule-based result. Once our experiments are complete, we can go ahead and click Run P2P. The transcript window lets us track our run and see if there are any warnings or errors that pop up. In this case, the experiment was successful. We can close the interactive P2P window and navigate to RVE. RVE will refresh itself and add a new interactive P2P RDB tab. This new tab contains the additional P2P simulation result data that we have just created. We can observe that the resistance segment from experiment one in our setup contains 164 ohms, which accounts for about 90% of the total effective resistance value of the rule-based result, which had about 179 ohms. This means we can focus our debug attention just in that particular segment and try and figure out the root cause of that very high resistance value. Thank you for watching this Caliber how-to video guide. I hope you found this helpful.